Hello internet. Hello Eisenbahn Freunde. Hello fellow modellers. We're into September already. Winter's coming time to get the logos out. So as you can see here, I got myself in my uh, last video, if you saw my last video, you'll see I bought myself a few bits and bobs which are actually uh, on the track at the moment. Well, most of them are anyway, apart from uh, an odd thing or two. And the thing that I wanted to show you all today is this Fleischmann Z21 Digital Set Premium. Now, that's a question. Is it premium? That's the question you need to be asking. There's quite a lot in this box. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool, to be fair. For a start set, for someone who was starting out, this would be uh, an, ideal pa an ideal package because you're, um, you're getting um, a sound loco, which obviously is the, uh, the BR193 in the locomotion colours. And it is quite, it's quite striking, to be fair. Um, and it comes with the multi-mouse Wi-Fi. And you obviously get the Z21 start and the uh, Wi-Fi itself. But the loco is a Sound Labs loco, um, which which are most of most of um, Fleischmann's locos are Sound Lab, apart from another one or two, like Henin Sound on their Steam, and a couple of other sound chips as well. So you know it's not unique to this this uh, this this company. Um, you can see it also comes with four wagons. Um, and it's a container set basically, which, uh, oh, it's not my camera, which is, which is pretty good, but um, this is the part that bothers me, this, this thing here that says premium, is it premium? In my opinion, it's not a premium set, it's, it, the loco makes it a premium set, I guess, um, so it's debatable whether it is or not, but if this was a premium set, the whole lot would be packaged it's, it's not a cheap set either, you know, I mean, you'll have, to, you'll have to delve around the internet. I mean, I got mine from Scograil, as you well know. I already get a pretty good deal from Scograil. So I'm not going to say what the price is. That's for you guys to check out yourself. Because um, it's a substantial amount of money. It's over £500 anyway. Um, I didn't pay that for mine. Um, but that's another story. The, the wagons in this set, as you can see, they're... Um, I'm, I'm going to show you one. I've got one actually in, in a container packet here. Um, the the Schenker wagons, as you can see, are eight five eight two five zero five zero. However, these particular wagons here, as you can see, it's depicting a picture of two of them there. They do not come in these boxes. They come in the polystyrene box, which is it's, which is the packaging inside of there. So, in my opinion. That is the reason why it shouldn't be called a premium pack. Because if it was premium pack, all these would be in their own packaging. And that is the sad thing about it, they're not. And I'm proper frustrated about that. I've already put some steps in to try and acquire some boxes for these. Because these are individually purchasable, as you can see from that one I've just shown you. So I'm a kind of disappointed, if I'm honest. I think Fleischmann have let the side down here. They could have gone the extra mile. They've done it in other sets. They've done it in cheaper sets. Um, the actual container for the uh, for the loco is this again. It's just a plain box. There's no, there's nothing fancy about it. There's nothing premium about that. It's just it's just a plastic box like they normally provide for their locos. And whilst the, the, the box of quality, it's just a shame that they didn't go out of the way and put four more boxes in because what happens is these are placed in a polystyrene in a very slim. I'm not going to open the box up because I've got a lot of stuff behind there, but. They, 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 they slot into a very slim line in, in the box itself and it's it's pretty poor really and then and then these are set set in separately um, and you have to fiddle around and put them on yourself so eh, not really a premium set in my opinion not really worth the money because they've not gone out of the way and packed these up individually had they done so then it would have been worth the money. I think they've just skimped and scraped on a, on, a, on a five quid box to knock 20 quid off it from their cost effectiveness. So the reason why I bought this box was because of the loco, because you can only get it in this set. I wanted a, I wanted a BR193 and I wanted it in the locomotion colors because I've, I've already got a 151 as you'll have seen not so long ago. 
and I've also got a, a BR two one two in the same in the same colour. So it kind of like just set my fleet off really. And I also I don't I, I didn't have this. I've actually got one of these now. I, I, and to be fair, this is a nice nice bit of kit. I, I've not used it yet, but I will be doing it because it'll be quite handy, especially if you're running trains on a modular system. You can let someone else use it then without faffing around. So I like that. That's the reason why. The Z21 already got one of them. Um, and the track and all that's the standard track, it's the A and B set that you get. Now the item number for this is um, 931891. So that's what the set is. And I guess you get you get a pretty good manual. Um, let me just drag the manual out so you can see it. I've got a couple of bits here actually, I need to be careful I don't knock them over. So Here's the manual, quite substantial to be fair. They don't skimp and scrape on manuals, and obviously it's in different languages, but you can see it's quite substantial, and it, and it does go through how you can use it, which is pretty cool to be fair. But that's what you expect for that kind of thing. If you're paying money, and, and you're paying a decent price, and you want you want decent stuff for your money, and to be fair, that's pretty cool. Now, on my unpacking set last time, I actually, um, I bought some additional bits and pieces. I bought these, which are 910120. And the reason why I bought these was so that I can mix and match them on the, um, as you can see, there's one orange one on there already. But then I could have the blue and the green one on there. And if I wanted to, I could also use these, which are 910220. I think Flashing should do more of these with different different colors on them. Again, that's so that I could either put two, or, two of them or, or even three on if they fit on. Um, and, and, and just create a different look and also I can take them off and then because they, they actually um, as you'll see in a minute they actually they, they actually come off very easy but there is there is a um, there's a T2000 that I've got on the end of here a uh, Van der Boat one which is pathetic to say the least it was like 70 quid um, and the way they've created the container it shows in the book that the uh, the two the two tanks are on the far side of, of the actual uh, you can't fit them on don't do that don't do what it shows in a picture so it's one of them little things you know what I mean they're just they're faffing around flash but they need to they need to go back to the quality they used to do years ago um, it's my bit of a gripe really but apart from that the locomotive is fantastic it's to their usual standard so I can't I mean that's that's the reason I bought this set was for the local the rest is just paraphernalia really um, but for a starter, for someone who's coming into the, into the, into modelling, if you wanted to buy a European train set, these sets are pretty good from from a from a start set perspective. Because you've got nothing to start with, then you get the Z21 with the Wi-Fi, and you get the hand, hand controller as well. So you don't have to use you don't have to go out and buy um, an iPad or or whatever. You know what I mean? A tablet or whatever. I mean, ninety percent of people have got tablets these days anyway, or the phones even. But you can keep it separate and you can run it on the Z21 um, hand controller of the multi mouse, which is which is like you know it's cool. You can run you can run a couple on your on your phone and then you can run another one on your on your uh, multi mouse. Uh, so it gives you a bit more control options, which I, which can always be a good thing. What'd be really nice in these start sets if they added some additional stuff to sort of entice you into it a bit more, like a couple of modern signals or. You know, so you could make it a little bit more complicated than what it is. But again, it's a digital start set, so I guess that's the reason why they don't do that. But if I was running the business, that's what I would be doing. I'd be trying to make it make it a bit more creative to, to try and entice people into the, into the industry because it's um, it's becoming um, a. I'm I mean I'm 60 odd now, me. So you know, it's 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 like there's not a lot of young people. There are a few around, but you don't get to see as many of this as as, as it. It'd be nice to see more younger people getting involved in this hobby but it's quite expensive so if you've not got a decent job and you're laying money out you know that's a different kettle of fish anyway that's my rant about this set is it worth the money that comes down to the individual personally um, I'd be disappointed if I had to pay the full whack for this because like, like I say them skimping on them boxes for them I just find it quite sad really I think I think they've um, I think they've just missed the boat a little bit but again you know what I mean hey ho right so let's just uh, turn our thoughts on the locomotive because the locomotive is impeccable to be fair let me just uh, let me just drag it up in front of my camera here because i've got it uh, got it a bit 
down the line there. So let's just move my camera. Forgive me for a bit of shaking. You'll see I've got a couple of things flying around the track list with some of the other stuff on that I've got. So here we go, let's just, uh, there's my BR151. That's probably my new coaches that I got last, last time out. I love that end coach, it's brilliant. It's got a chip in it. You can set the, um, you can set it up. I'm gonna have some interior lighting put in them as well because I think it's fantastic. So let me just, uh, let me get a bit closer with it so we can get on this loco here. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave it where it is. Uh, so that you can see the lights and that on it. So here we go, this is the, um, the BR193. And you can see it's really nice. It, it, it really is, it's nice. Um, and it's a sound loco, so obviously there's a sound check. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to flip the lights on. So, F0 pops the lights on. Oh, my camera's starting to move a little bit. What's going on here? Whoa! So let's move it back. I've got it on my stand, and my stand sort of like... goes on walk about it. It's a bit, bit weird, really. So that's the lights. I hope, let me just turn this main light off here, which is supporting the box, so you'll be able to see the lights a lot easier then. Let me turn them off and on again. So there you go. So the LED light's really nice. Pop it back on again. And the sound is the same as all the BR193s that they've got. There's nothing different. If, you, if you've seen any of my BR191s previous series, the DB one, that is green. Uh, that is green. Then you'll be familiar with, with the uh, sound on these. So let's fire it up. I'll show up for a minute so you can hear it. So that's F1, that fires up the electric motor. Obviously the, um, the pantographs as normal on the roof, fantastic detail on the roof of the uh, low coast and flashman. That's one of the reasons why I invest in them all the time. Um, the quality is second to none most of the time. You do get an odd faulty one which has to go back. As you can see, this one is uh, BR193 772 as depicted on the cab there. And F2, it's a long horn. F3, short horn. Quite good, them horns. And then you've got F4, which is high beam. Let's see if you can see that with this turned off. Let me turn it off again so you can see it. I'm not sure, yeah, you can see it, it's flicking up, but you know, you'd have to be really front on and on to see it properly. Let me pop the light back on. And then, F5 is coupling. I think they do that really well. F6 you can't see or hear until the loco is moving, it's the inertia, so basically it reduces the speed of the loco by 50%. And then you've got um, F7. It's actually a compressor. And then F8, it's, um, you won't see that at the moment because it's the rear end light. So it switches the rear end light off, the red light off the back. And then F9, again, unless it was moving, you wouldn't see that. It's a shunting gear on and off. F10 is mute. F11, I'm gonna have to turn the light off to see if this works. So F11 is cab side 
lights off so you can see the lights just went off there on the cab side and that's exactly the same that's on the um, second class side so this is the second class side the first class side that's f12 and obviously that would do exactly the same but you won't see that because it's the other end then f13 is a low horn low short horn and then f14 So that's general noise of a passing train in the back. F15. That's the cab doors opening and closing. F16. That's a cabin announcement. That's like an emergency uh, um, break in. 17. Again, it's a warning. F18. Emergency brake. F19. It's screeching. So when it's coming to a halt. Or when it's going around the corners. So... That's um, a functional sequence announcement, it's called, but it's again like, it's like an emergency thing. And then 21 lowers and 22 increases the uh, sound. So what I am surprised, we haven't got any statement announcements, this is what we usually have. Uh, that does surprise me. But... Yeah, it's normally um, there's normally a, 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 a platform announcement on these. So I guess with it being a um, a goods train set, that or a great a, a goods engine, that's probably why that if that isn't there. And I've just caught my camera again. Forgive me for nudging it, guys. But they're the sound functions for this locomotive. So. I'm going to fire it up now and send it round the track a bit so you can see some of the wagons that are on the back because I've added a few others as well um, so let's just move it forward a bit try and do it slowly so you can see them all well, what's going on here? for some unknown reason there's no movement on the loco Oh, well it was working the other day, but now it doesn't want to work. That's very interesting. So it looks like I've got a faulty loco. Oh, well that's disappointing. Uh, well, that's kind of kiboshed it, hasn't it? That is really, really disappointing now. I had to, I ran this round the track this morning and it was working perfectly. So it looks as if it's, uh, it's the engine's given up on it. Ironically, I was saying that every now and again you get a faulty one and it looks as if I have acquired a faulty one, which is a little bit disappointing to say the least. Right, well, that is the sad part about it. So <laughs> the engine doesn't work. Well, what a fantastic premium set, <laughs> you might say. So it's a bit disappointing, really, because I wanted to show you it. Because it, I mean, it, it, when it was working the other day or well, this morning, it was pretty cool, to be honest. It went around the track as normal. I'm just going to take it off the track and have a quick look at it underneath to see if there's anything out on towards that I can see. No, it doesn't appear. So it looks like everything looks fine. Let me just see if I can. Uh, Retrack it again and see if it will make a difference. Yeah, that's that's pretty disappointing to be honest. Yeah, now it's worked. That's kind of weird. 
there you go just trapped it back on and it's worked so that is very weird so I've obviously got a faulty engine there um, let's move it forward while I've got the opportunity to see if it'll move yeah there you go so I don't know what happened there obviously there must be a fault there somewhere for it not to have moved it's not the track to clean the track this morning so I'm going to turn my camera around to the side so we can catch these wagons as it comes past and then I'm, I'm going to call it I'm going to call a video because obviously if it's Loco's fault, I don't want to, I don't want to run it. Uh, just back out a bit of the camera so you can see the wagons. So as you can see, here's the first, um, I keep catching my camera, sorry guys. I've, I've, I've got it on a, a trolley, so when I catch the legs, it's uh, moving to the side of it. So as you can see, this is the container set which was on on the box uh, with the removal containers. Um, they've got little clips on them so you can clip them on, which are quite finicky to mess around with, but they're all right. Do the job. And they look pretty smart, to be fair. And like I say, I've got a couple of spare ones that I can mix and match them so I can have different colours on if I want. I have one on two, one on one on. This is one with the container on it. Again, it's got the yellow little clips underneath it. You get five in each pack. Oh, there we go, my locker's packed up again. Weird. There's definitely something wrong with this loco. I'm gonna have to send it back and have a look at it. It's really playing up that. It doesn't want to work. You can see the Schenker wagons, the pair that come in the box. They are pretty smart. You can, you can take the container off. As you can see, it, it, it can have a truck underneath it. I've actually got um, a truck, which I got from DM Toys, there you go. So you can take the Schenker wagons off and pop them on the back of that and it'll, it'll look like it's part of that, which is pretty cool. And because I've got the extra containers, I can put them on the back of here. Um, after taking them off and it'll look like it's a separate thing altogether and that's what I like I think I think Flashy we should do more containers like that so you can mix and match them so this is a T2000 and there goes the loco again I don't know what's going on here today again this is a bring again these come off you can see so you can uh, attach them to a, to a wagon and have them towed around on your, on, on your layout or whatever so I like the fact that you can do that, it's pretty cool. And um, let's just move that a little bit faster. Uh, this loco is definitely playing up today. There's something I missed with this loco. Again, these are just containers. There's no, there's no um, wheels on these, they're just flat boxes, which are pretty cool. And um, I bought three of these. Um, I can't for the life remember me which were which, but I'm sure I'll have a look in a minute and I'll drag the boxes over and I'll give you the numbers for all three. Um, and this is the uh, Van der Bosch one. These containers in the, in, in, in the actual, um, let me just stop this a second. The containers are supposed to go on the end sections here, but the way the holes are and the way that, that they've put the metal posts in here, it doesn't fit. They have to go close together like that, and they're not actually on pr brilliantly. It's pretty poor design, that. So I think they've messed up there. I think they put the holes in the wrong position. But the containers are fantastic. They're a really good quality. They're very, very heavy. Let's bring it right up close so you can see it. They're very well done, built-wise. They're, they're fantastic. And, and weathering-wise, they'll be great to weather these because there's a lot of detail on them. But the lot of the holes that they've got underneath, they don't correspond with the with the um, with the posts that are on here, so it's really difficult to get it to uh, sit on the wagon correctly. Says he as he gets it on him first time, but it is quite tough. But um, anyway, let me let me fire this train up. Let's try and get it round the track once. Right, you've, you've not got anything to look at at the moment. Let me just bring this around because I want to show you the cultures that I picked up that are on my 151. Let me just pull that up in front of you guys now. So 
So as you can see, these are the coaches that I picked up recently and they're really nice. They're about 25, 27 quid a piece. There's a first class and then there's um, four second class. Right, that's, I'm just gonna let that run around a bit guys at a bit of a speed and then I'll bring it back in and slow down. We'll have another look at the wagons before I finish the uh, video off. But as you can see, these coaches here, they're really nice. Let's show that sound off a bit. So let me just move it forward a bit so you can see the, uh, the rest of the coaches. Because they are really cool. And I think once they've got LED light in them, they'll be fantastic. Let me just uh, make the video a bit bigger so you can see the coaches one at a time. The detail inside them is fantastic and all are quite nice. And I'm pretty sure I want to get some people to put inside them. When I pull them apart to put LED light in them, I think... Um, Move that past there, get the next one. They're all different running numbers, these as well. So, and they're available at the moment. But what I'm just going to pull this past and I'm going to show you the back end coach. That back end coach there is fantastic. I'm going to put it on the corner so I can show you the rear lights on it. Just give me a second, I've got my iPad in my hand so I can't turn my video from now. Give me two seconds. So I can uh, turn my camera around and you can pick, you pick the lights off the back of it then with a bit of luck. So, let me just turn my control over. Let's go over there. Right, so let me come up closer and you'll see that the tail lights are actually right on the top of the, uh, on the coach. And let me just turn them off and on. So let me turn this light off behind. So, uh, so you can see, I'm going to flip it the other way so that as if it's turning around to come this way. In fact, I'm going to put my, control, my trolley over there. Give me a second, guys. Sorry about this, because it's just quite... I've got... Right, there we go. I'm actually struggling to stand up today. I've damaged my kneecap, so that's why I've not done a video for a little while. So, uh, I need all the support I can get. As you can see, let me just uh, turn this the other way. Look at that. How cool is that? It's, it's working off my iPad as a separate, a separate wagon. So, the locomotive's got white lights on at the front now as well, because it's going that forward way. But, you can also make this work so that when you, um, when you actually, when the loco moves forward or backwards, it'll, it'll also change. So, what you could do is you can give it the number of what your loco is, so that when your loco goes forward, it will have the, obviously it'll have the red tail lights on because it's going forward and this depicts the end coach and then when you reverse it it'll put the white lights on and you'll see the red lights on the back of the engine which you actually won't on this engine because the BR151, the Fleischmann ones, they only have white lights on them they don't have the red reversing lights on them which is kind of weird really, it's the only local that they make that doesn't do that but I think, I think that the, uh, the strength of them lights is really good and it, you can see it flicks over in a second, which is pretty cool. I like it. I think it's really, really strong. Uh, I like what that does. Let's get it a bit closer. You can see how how, how bright the light is. It's really cool. So, um, you probably can't see the two at the bottom because of the angle it's at, but it's really nice. I like it. So, and then when you turn the lights off, the whole lights go off. So, which is pretty cool. I do like it. So um, let me just fire it up again and then let it go around. There we go. So that is um, the coaches that I got from Fleischmann. Now I'm just bringing this MR MRCE around here just so you can see these other wagons. So let me just bring my camera back. And slow this down a little bit. So I picked up these. I had a couple of these already. But as you can see, I've now got two, four, two, four, five, I've got ten, and they come in pairs in the packs. And this is the number for them. So it's um eight four eight nine oh four. So I've got five packs of them now, and you get a red and a white in each pack. And they are really nice coaches. They're really well detailed. I'm, I'm going to pull one off in a minute and bring it up to the camera really close so you can see it. Let me pop the light back on because it, it, it doesn't really justify without seeing them. They really are nice wagons. Let me just stop.
stop that in front there, there we go. So, in fact, I'm going to lift my camera up and move in close to one so you can see one really close up. Let me just make it a bit smaller so we can get there closer. So as you can see, the detailing is fantastic. And on the ends as well, they look really cool. I do like them, I think they're fantastic. Let me just bend this a bit so I can come over the roof as well so you can see the roof. So you can see how nice they are, they're really well detailed. And whilst they're not cheap, I think they're really fantastic. And when it comes to weathering them, they'll be great for weathering because of the, uh, there's a lot of lines on them. So here's the red ones and you can see the red ones as well, they're, they're, they're just as nice. Um, obviously it's the same style but with just different lettering on the side. But um, they are really nice, I like them. So you can see the end there, I've got a line down the back of them. They're really cool. And there's the uh, MRCE, which is pulling them. So these, these are what I picked up um, in my unboxing. If you've not seen my unboxing video, it's on before this one. So I'm just going to fly down and, and then I, I got a few of these. I already had one of these. This is one that I had, um, OBB Hopper Wagons. So there was a few more for sale, so I picked them up. But you can actually get them without, you, you can remove the coal out of the top of them because the coal looks very plasticky. I was toying with the idea of putting some proper coal on top of that. But then it'll, it'll peak over the top, so probably not a good idea. And then I picked up another one from Dortmund last year with like with the white limestone in it. I'm not a fan of that, it looks too plasticky. But I mean, the, the wagon itself, the, the graphics on it are fantastic, as you can see. Look. And again, the buffers and the end things all look a bit plasticky, but you know, once I've done a bit of weathering on these, I'm pretty sure they'll look fantastic. But that's, that's pretty much a lot of the stuff that I picked up. There's an additional logo on top of that as well, which I'll show on my next video, because I don't want to put it all in this one video. And I've already gone over 30 minutes, which I wasn't planning on doing. It's only because that logo stopped working. But again, and there's, um, there's uh, the rest of the cargo ones that I got, as you can see. There's one with the, uh, with the actual coal out of it, so you can actually put your own loads inside it. But anyway, let me bring this back round, and then let's bring this logo in, and we'll... Um, call the video a day. Um, just want to try and get some more shots. Let me just put this down again. Forgive me while I just bring it up. I want to just get a few more shots of these, these container wagons as they go past so you guys can see them. Right, so there we go. Let's just pull up a bit more so you get to see the engine. Again, I'm a bit disappointed with the engine because I thought it was going to be okay. You can see the detail and it's fantastic. I mean, it's just absolutely. In fact, I'm going to stop it and show you the roof because it's just, the detail on these roofs from Fleischmann is great. There we go, I'm going to mess around with my camera again. Just bear with me a second, guys, here. Well, I'll get on. Just look at that. Look at that work on the roof there. It's fabulous work. And, and, and the cab detail as well. That's just... See, you see the speakers on the top there? And all the pantographs lift up. And you can see the name depicted exactly the same as on the box, look. See it there? The Vida or Viola. Oh, it's Viola, yeah, it's V-I-O-L-A. And that's depicted on the side of the, of, of the loco as well. So I'm guessing that's the front end, so I'll put the back end on. But as you can see, the detail on this is fantastic. The cab detailing is absolutely beautiful. So, right. Again, um, just showing me the top of the wagons on these. Same as more container wagons, I mean, they're just squares at the top, obviously. But. Right, then. Let's put this back straight and then you can uh, watch it fly past as it just disappears. Let's put this back down. Forgive me a second, guys, while I just straighten it up. There we go. And pop it back in front of the loco. Just come away a bit. There you go. So that is the new Z21 digital premium set with a faulty engine. <laughs> 
I'm sure you'll agree, if it was working, it's not a bad set to be honest. I mean, I give it a bit of stick about the boxes, but you know, it's, it's pretty all right to be fair. So, make of what you will. I'll send this off, let's see if we can get it to go again. I have to give it a run around a few times and make sure it doesn't... I don't understand why it wasn't working, it doesn't make sense. Especially after running it in for an hour. So you can see these Chinese containers, not a big fan of them to be honest, not a big Chinese fan of the way they're treating everyone in the world at the moment, but I guess it's just a model. But I do like the Schenkers, I think they look really cool. As you can see I've got a few of them, so I'll be able to have some quite long container wagons when I get my modular thing together. Right, it's taking forever. But, um, yeah. Hope you enjoy the new containers I've got. I've got quite a substantial amount and I am actually going to give you the numbers on them when I can turn this around and get, get over to put, pick the boxes up. Um, I'm not sure which ones are which though. Aha, yes, this is the... Um, Right, I do know which is which, says he, as he absolutely doesn't. <laughs> right, you're going to have to have a look. I'm, I'll give you the box numbers. It's 825006. I think that that one is the, um, the Bing con containers. I, I, I'm guessing because of the because of the uh, the way that that is set up for the uh, container wagon to go in it. So I think that's the one with the container. I think that's the Bing one. And this one here, uh, I guess this is the uh, Van der Beek one, or Van der Bosch, which is eight, yeah, as you can tell by the two containers on each side. So it's eight, two, five, three, three, uh, three, eight. See how it's depicted? that the uh, containers on each side, well that's what you can't do. So you pretty much can't do that unfortunately. So, um, and then this next one is the one with the, um, which is 825329. That's the one with the Eccle.com, the white containers. So, they look pretty cool to be fair. I've got quite a few of these kind of, um, you probably saw my last unboxing. Um, I've also got my um, fur and cam one, which is nice. Um, they are so nice. I can imagine when they're all put together, they look pretty cool. I've got a couple of these as well, um, with, so you can have the Schenker on the back. I've got a lot of the Schenker ones, I love them. And then a couple of container ones. So what I might do is just put four containers on one and uh, two Schenker wagons on another and that's 825004 I've got to be careful here that I've got these on the floor I've got two of them same one and then I've got another which is just round containers which again this is pretty cool you've seen all these before though um, 825009 and again these look pretty cool. They've got the round containers on, but with the um, square brackets around them, which look pretty pretty cool as well. And then last but not least, the little one that I've got here, which is a um, container one, which has just got four containers, two on each side. Again, that's um, 825011. So if you're looking for some container wagons, some tea, I don't know if it's T2000 or T3000, I can't remember, but um, you know that's the sort of stuff that you can get, which is, I think is pretty cool to be fair. And that just about does it guys. Um, this video is well too long, it's 40 minutes long, I only wanted it to be 30 minutes, but thanks to this locomotive that's now coming in, um, letting us down at the beginning. Obviously it's pulled itself out of the mire. Um, there we go. So that concludes this video and the next video I'll be doing will be on the Rail Force One that I picked up uh, which is hopefully not faulty and I'll be doing a sound check on that um, in the next couple of days after this one uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll get to move that around the track and it'll work properly. So again thanks very much for watching my video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your pals and if you didn't like it give it a thumbs down because I collect thumbs up and thumbs down, not bother me. And uh, I'm, 
I'm looking forward to doing my next video for you guys and hope it works. So enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you in the future. Have a great day. Bye bye.